So all dimensions, size dimensions or location dimensions. Now, there's a whole bunch of terminology at the start of the chapter, which we will start going over tomorrow, but I want to talk about the line types that are involved. And I'm going to go to this sheet that was attached to your syllabus. Now, you may want to back this up with page 507. Page 507 is the alphabet of lines back in chapter 10. Remember, we went over that one a couple times now. In essence, we're going to bring three different line types in here when we do dimensioning. The first line type is called an extension line. And you see one right here. Okay. So that line is an extension line. The line weight of that is 0 0.012 inches or 0.3 millimeter. Okay, so if we're doing it by pencil or if we are doing it by computer. We have a layer set up in our templates called the DIM layer that is set up to these standards. For the most part, the lines are continuous. Okay. So it's a continuous line. Now, that's going to change continuous. I have no idea. It's good enough. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Now, we will find excerpts from that in certain situations later. But for the most part, all extension lines are continuous. Then we have one other line. It's this guy right here. This is called a dimension line. Its line weight is equal to 0 0.012 or 0.3 millimeter. Same as the extension line. So therefore, you can use the same layer, the dim layer. These are also continuous, but it usually has text in the center. Text in the center. So there's the standards for the two line types. Now, we have one other line type that we do use here. I'm just going to back this away just a touch, so yeah, I'll just pull it up. Put my little arrow back on there. It's down at the bottom. We call this a leader line right here. Okay, so this is a leader line. And it has the exact same standards as the two above. Okay. So again, my line weight is equal to 0 0.012 or 0.3 millimeter, and it's a continuous line. All of these will go on the dimension layer when we go to the computer, which drafting 135, our next course, will be all computer. Now, what are these lines used to do, used for? The extension line is used to tie the dimension to the feature. That's what it's used for. It ties the dimension line to the feature. We always have a 16th inch gap from the feature to the start of our extension line. The extension line then runs up to the dimension line and goes an eighth inch past it. So extension line, used to tie the dimension to a feature. The dimension line, shown here, what's it used for? It is used to show the extent of the information. And to show the information, or numbers, whatever you want to call it. It's not always numbers, sometimes it's text. The dimension line, the text is preferred in the center, but it can be moved around. It's preferred in the center. 
When you come into it, it will always have eighth inch text. Since the text is eighth inch, then you have a sixteenth inch gap right here, and uh, just all the old standards, right? So it should be centered, should have a sixteenth inch gap front and back, and we're using eighth inch text. You will also have a termination symbol on a dimension line. The ANSI standard is this one right here. I've given you a blow up of the arrow here in the middle. Notice the size of it. It's just like the one we've made before for a cutting plane line, except that it's half the size. This is the ANSI standard, is a closed filled arrowhead. You can terminate the line with different symbols. You just want to be consistent throughout it. When I say this is the ANSI standard, it's the one they recommend, but they have a whole list of things that are part of the ANSI standard. Dots, okay. Or slashes. you can come in here. I could use architectural, for the most part, uses a slash, like that, okay, which is an eighth inch high, eighth inch wide. You will see some firms use an open box. You will see some firms use <coughs> a solid dot. You'll see an open arrowhead on some drawings. The firm really has the ch choice of what they want to terminate with. Most of them stick with whatever discipline they're with. So closed field arrowheads or slash marks, because those are the two predominant ones. But you will see different ones out there. The thing that will be constant is that your termination for that dimension line won't change from one dimension to the next. Okay. The leader line has one termination on it. Well, let, 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 just excuse that for a second. I'll get to that because it's its own beast here in a moment. Now, when you're placing dimensions, we'll talk a lot about how these numbers work and everything, but you'll get multiple lines of dimensioning. The first, the, I've put some dimensions on here for your standards. The first dimension line will be a half inch off the object. So whatever you're drawing, when you finish your multi-views, when you say, I'm going to put a dimension here, measure a half inch off, and that is where the dimension line goes. We do that because we want a little break there, and we want to make sure people understand where the object is and where your dimensioning occurs. Now, this is different than the text. <coughs> the text says the ANSI standard is 3 eighths, and it is. But I like that extra half inch, so I've made it the CSI standard. Because okay, I like that little extra bit in there to give me a little more room. Once you paste the first one at a half inch, all sequential rows go 3 eighths. So if I do another row, it's 3 eighths, another row, it's 3 eighths, another row, it's 3 eighths. How many of you have those decimal equivalents memorized? You're going you're gonna to like that you do, because you're going to be doing stuff a lot. Half inch and 3 eighths is 7 eighths, okay. plus another one is inch and 8, inch and 3 sixteenths. You're going to get these things. Okay. And it's real nice if you don't have to pull out a calculator and get those. All right, so this little sheet has all of those to define. Here's your extension line standards. Here's your dimension line standards. Question. Are they always to the right? Or the left? I mean, is there you always dimension to the right? Um, we will talk about associative dimensioning in great detail. <laughs> and geometric dimensioning in great detail. That's what we call them. But that's what we call them. Am I putting them over here? Am I putting them over here? What, what's the case? Grouping is another term we use. Um, yeah, you're probably going to be sick of me talking about it. Okay. okay. I'm going to push you back a day or so. Um, let's go to the leader line. When you place a leader line, some of the standards for it, it, should, it is preferred at 45 degrees. You see it right here. All these dimensions right here are just showing you how to do this one line. Okay. So my arrow 
terminates on the outside object line. Arrow terminates on the outside object line. No gap. Now, what does that mean? Well, no right here I got a single negative cylinder, but what if that was a counterboard or a countersink or a threaded hole? Because we could have a threaded counterboard hole. It looks something like that. All of those are done with this one dimension. So you always take your leader and it terminates on the outside object line. The leader line then pulls off 45 degrees preferred. You can go 30 to 60. We want an angle on it, basically. What we don't really want is this. Okay, where I'm doing something horizontal and putting my dimension out here. Why would we go be kind of concerned about going either straight vertical or straight horizontal with these? Get confused with other stuff. Yeah, it matches up with most of the geometry. Same reason we took Hatchy and put it at an angle. Because it's a thin line, it's background information, we don't want it to be confused with our object itself. You kind of get an example of it right there. Okay, if somebody kind of had blinders on, that would cause a little bit of confusion. So 45 degrees preferred, 30 to 60 if not. Your shoulder is an eighth inch wide. So it comes up and it has a shoulder on it that's an eighth inch. Your text is then centered on that shoulder. And again, it's eighth inch text, so you should have about a sixteenth to start your text and then run it sequentially. Again, justify this stuff. Okay, if it comes down and maybe I got a counter board, I'm going to justify all this. Okay. If I'm going to put a counter board on here or whatever the case might be. Okay. The shoulder that I'm talking about is this little piece right here. Oh. Okay. So what we call our shoulder. Some people will call it a landing. And in fact, landing is the terminology CAD uses. And it's, um, it's an eighth? It's an eighth, and it runs horizontal. Again, we want that shoulder a half inch off the object. Okay, so that's what this dimension here is for. In essence, what is a leader line? It's kind of a cross between an extension and a dimension. It uses all the same stuff as an extension line, but it also uses all the same things as a dimension line, because it's got text, it's got a termination arrow, things of that nature. So it's kind of its own beast to where it combines the other two. But we call it a leader line. Many times in some portions of dimensioning, this is all you'll use. Think of an architectural detail. In essence, there are very few linear dimensions on those. It's almost all leader line because they're building with stock materials. Two by four, two by sixes, seven sixteenths sheets, whatever the case might be. And we don't dimension those things. We just say, here it is. This is what you're making it out of. Yes? So the leader line actually stops at the diameter 0 0.3. And that additional line is just? Yeah, here's your leader line. Right there. Okay, that's, that explains, that explains a lot. Okay, okay. This one is just saying what angle the leader line is going at. This one's dimensioning the shoulder of the leader line. This one's dimensioning how far off the object you pull the leader line. Okay, does that got it? Yeah, I got it. So the shoulder is that. That, or that little horizontal segment right there. It says, hey, we're done kind of showing you where this is at, now we're getting ready to give you the information.
So this standard sheet right here, this is what we'll be using coming forward when you start placing your dimensions and extension lines. Again, if you have concerns on what those two lines are and the properties that go with them, go to chapter 10, alphabet lines, and you can see that written there. I think it's page 507. All right, that's all I've got for today. Um, I did put some questions for review up. I didn't want to really give an assignment out today because some people are finishing up drawings from the last section. In fact, a bunch of you that did them, we never finished that B block. Um, I don't know what happened on those instructions, but I put most of those back in your drawers. It won't take you much to finish that off, but please finish those. Okay. Um, anything else out there you need to be aware of? Oh, you're out of um, landscape B paper. Okay, so get some paper. Okay, I'm glad we stopped because I do want to. We got one other thing going on. Um, registration <laughs> starts today, I believe. Mm -hmm. okay. I wanted to finish up drafting 132 and have those grades so when we do, went to each of you and got you in, it's did a degree audit with you and made sure all your courses were good and ready to move forward, you at least get those two grades right now. Um, I haven't finished 132 yet, but I am all caught up on my grading, which is good. That doesn't happen very often. Um, give me a day or so and I'll try and finish those up and then we'll start doing advising. Nobody's going to take your drafting courses, so you don't have to worry about those. But the people I do want to prioritize is those that have courses besides drafting ones that still are required to take, okay, such as math, English, selective, something of that. Um, can I get a show of hands of people who think they're in that category right now, and I'm going to put you in the front of the list. Okay, so we'll go. If I call your name, I got you. Gabe, Declan. Missy one, Amy, Andrew, Roger, Cheryl, and Sean. I think that's about all of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to prioritize you folks, and we'll get you in this week for sure. To, because you know those classes will fill up sooner than the rest of them. And we want to try to get your right time frame. If you, you didn't have your, so it looks like Lisa, you're going, David, and Jess, and Elise. What do they have over in? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all. Okay, great. That's all I needed. So thanks for your time. And,